what do you, in what ways do you envision this team being different than your previous two? Yeah, I think uh, on the defensive side, uh, probably not, um, you know, still want to pressure the basketball. Uh, this team has more length and size, uh, so our, our expectation, our standards, that we do a better job, um, you know, keeping the ball out of the paint when it gets into the paint, that we use that length, that athleticism, that physical play uh, to finish plays, whether it's getting a block, uh, jump walling at the rim or getting a rebound. So from a defensive standpoint, I think uh, a team that, you know, around the goal, we can be a lot more effective preventing people from scoring around the rim, certainly. On the offensive side, uh, having multiple ball handlers has been a huge asset for us. Um, you know, multiple guys can get in the paint, run the team, make a play. Um, liked what we've seen so far in our ability to knock down the perimeter shot. And feel like that from a depth standpoint on both sides of the ball, we have options to play four guards, two bigs, um, a lot of different combinations that we're going to continue to work through and see uh, which ones work the best. But I think there's certainly more depth there as well. Is this getting closer to the kind of team that, that you want going forward? Well, I think, you know, at the end, we're always going to want a team that plays winning basketball. And I'll always believe that if you're going to be successful, especially going on the road, you're really going to have to defend. Uh, and that's something that we're going to, you know, take a lot of pride in. Uh, if you say, is this, you know, I, I guess I'm also aware enough to realize that it needs to be, you know, a, a more in balance type of attack offensively and defensively to give ourselves the best chance to win every single night. And that's something we want to do. So um, at the end, I want, we want great kids who are great people who work hard, who love to be Cyclones, and that is in front of all of it. We've, we've been fortunate to have that, and we still do. And I'd say our ability to have, you know, like get in the paint, get to the foul line, and, and score the ball better certainly is, uh, is something we like having. You mentioned Hassan's improvement. Uh, in what areas has he improved the most um, to, to get the high praise? I think you said he could be the most improved player in the league. Yeah, I'd start with like work ethic and, and buy-in, understanding what we need him to do and how he can do that every single day. Uh, he's making uh, offensively this huge stride where we can play him uh, as a facilitator, we can play him uh, as a playmaker, we can use him as a lob threat at the rim. He's all over the offensive board, so he's just been, you can feel uh, him imposing his will offensively every possession. Felt like last year he did some things defensively uh, where he was very disruptive, deny a pass, block a shot, get a rebound. He's doing those things with a higher level of regularity as well, but I, I do think it starts with his commitment, his mindset, his buy-in, his work ethic, because he set the tone and now he's you know, reaping the benefit of that hard work. I know you can't talk too much about the specifics of it, but what do you feel like your guys' team accomplished in some of your preseason scrimmages? Yeah, I mean, you, you, you have those opportunities to learn more about your team, to learn the things that you're doing well, to learn the things you need to improve upon. I think that certainly has happened. We love playing teams, programs that we, we really respect, like the two that we played, uh, because they're able to, to do some things, to expose things that we need to get better at. Uh, I think that other things that we learned is – you know, like with the depth, there's there's more guys, there's more combinations. That was important to learn. Um, you know, just in general terms, uh, I think just an understanding of how this team differs from teams we've had in the past. I don't think there's necessarily – there's certain things we're committed to defensively, but want to play to the strengths of our personnel. I think offensively we've been more adaptive and, and again, wanting to play to the strengths of that personnel as well. As you look to begin the regular season next week, what kind of things did your program kind of – Great job and want to accomplish with your non-conference schedule this year? Well, I think it's, you know, one day and one game at a time. Uh, taking uh, the opportunity that's in front of us, putting all our focus into that game and, and giving everything we can to play the absolute best that we can that night. Uh, as a team that's a little bit younger than what we've been, it's important that as you build confidence, you build it through doing things well, uh, through integrity, through a job well done, and, and then you, you feel great when you're doing that. And so um, we respect everybody that we play, and we know that every night out we better be at our best um, because we play some really good teams. What's the value of having Trey from day one this season, and, and where has he developed even more from what he showed last season? Yeah, he's, he's been uh, – he's showed some leadership. Uh, he's more – uh, somebody that we can count on as a consistent scorer. 
Uh, he's done a, a tremendous job uh, getting to the foul line, uh, generating points for us at the rim, bringing a physical offensive presence. And, and I think he's slowed down offensively in a good way where the game is not as sped up for him. So he's doing a, a terrific job there. He really helps us offensively create opportunities as the clock wears down. He's, he's got a good motor and continues to play. Uh, defensively, someone now with more veteran experience uh, as we don't have quite as much, maybe in some other positions that we've had in the past, we're counting on his veteran experience uh, at that position to, to really benefit us well. And then consistency on the glass, rebounding. He needs to be a guy that every day says, I want to lead this league in rebounding. I want to be the top rebounder in the Big 12, having that focus where guys in the past, like a Melvin Edgem or Dustin Hogue, some that we've had, have done that. He needs to have that same intent, and that really will benefit him and benefit our team. With as dramatic of an influx of talent as you guys have seen this season, is there potentially a challenge in managing outside expectations, especially for a relatively young team? Yeah, I mean, it's important for me to, to make sure our guys understand where their focus needs to be on a daily basis on the task at hand and what's in front of them. I know that there's things out there that can create distractions, whether it's social media, other people, someone else's expectation, what's said on a message board. What my job is is to make sure that our guys understand that those things aren't real. What is real is what we do on a daily basis. What is real is the work and the things that we put in as a team uh, each and every day, and they need to do a great job keeping their focus on what their job is to make our team play the best they can, and that will continue to get them more opportunities. Um, I think in your guys' non con, you guys have about five or six teams in the Ken Palm, like 300s preseason. When you guys went about creating the schedule, what goals did you guys have for yourself? Yeah, the, the only goal that we have every single year is to put together a competitive schedule that gives us the best chance to put ourselves in position to be playing in the NCAA tournament. And there's variables that go into that with conference schedule, strength of schedule, non-conference, the team that you have and everything. But we're very mindful and intentional at looking at what is the team that we have, what are the other games that we have, and how do we put those games together to give us the absolute best chance to be playing in March Madness.